Good morning and thank you for joining us for another look at the papers this morning. And to help us make sense of it, we have two guests. Before I introduce them, my name is Felicity Ezewike. I have Tubosu Akeji, Reputation Manager, joining us, as well as Ifi RG Policy Analyst. Thank you both for coming on the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right, we'll start things off with the Nation newspaper this morning. Um, the big one is the WHO suspends COVID-19 chloroquine treatment trial. Um, that was when I saw the news immediately broke and I was like, what is going on? Why are we going back and forth? Um, it has two riders. Uh, more people dying from use of drug. What to eat by agency. Um, let me start with you, uh, Chibosu, before we go look at other headlines. What, what do you make of this uh, suspension of the COVID-19 chloroquine test, especially when a world leader like Trump is touting the fact that he is using it um, as a preventive measure? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I think uh, it's not very surprising. Uh, if you recall, President Trump technically jumped the gun when he first talked about the use of chloroquine because it was still, like he said, the headline is screaming that WHO is suspending the trial. There was nothing confirmed about it. There were fears, you know, about the implication of using chloroquine. And the data that they've received in recent time is starting to show that more people are even dying from the use of chloroquine. You'd recall that a lot of countries had even suspended the use of chloroquine for its primary usage, which is treatment of malaria some years back. You know, so some of those complications, if they are, you are not able to properly manage them in um, during clinical trial, then you are going to have to, you know, suspend it because the drug is either non-effective or is now causing more harm than um, than good. All right. Um, there are other headlines here, but I just wanted to get started with that one. Uh, GDP grew by 1.87% in the first quarter, says MBS. Lagos, federal government, working on schools reopening. Um, it could... Igalo heads for U Man U exit this week. Permanent deal shaky. For sports lovers, uh, that might interest you. Details is on page 31 of the paper. Rainstorm destroys school roof. 30 houses in Lagos. The rain on Sunday was something else, though. And then we have this one on INEC OK's e-voting from 2020. Ify. Let's start with this growth. Um, GDP grew by 1.87% in the first quarter. What's your take on that? Um, um, thank you. Uh, Felicity, this is basically, um, I guess it's the fallback from the, uh, the sort of the, the small uh, progress we're making from last year. Um, don't forget the first quarter basically records um, January to March, which were not necessarily the most active uh, months, re the lockdown from COVID. Uh, 1.8 ordinarily should be a good figure, but we have to also uh, temper that with the fact that it has not really been recorded uh, per capita, as, as typically never really reported. I'm not sure why that is. So that gives us a, a more balanced uh, viewpoint where you look at um, how much, uh, what is the output or what is the spend per person in Nigeria. We know we're a high populate, um, populated um, economy. So that will give us a more uh, uh, accurate read of how far we've gone. And let's not forget there are other countries in Africa as well, such as um, Ethiopia, uh, Ivory Coast, that have recorded growth of, uh, I mean, that astron astronomical growth, such as um, probably to the tune of maybe about 5% to uh, 10%, which is almost uh, unheard of, which is almost magical. And when you look at what their growth rate has been in, from a tr in terms of a, the back, a forward trajectory, you will see that the, 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 that trend is actually a, a, a more, uh, it's a more conservative uh, estimate of what, what we're supposed to be doing for the next um, quarter, and and there 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 on from there there on from there. Sorry, uh, uh, Thomas, do, do you see INEC pulling off this e-voting thing uh, with a target of 2021? Um, I'm very very skeptical, <laughs> so, and, yeah, because uh, I I do not think that. Um, they will be able to quickly pull it off because even uh, the policy document or uh, the um, guidelines that we're expecting on Monday did not come, you know, in full as expected. I've not been. I, I hear there's a 17-page document that's been released. Yes, there was one that was released. Yeah. yeah. 
Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But um, while reading the news, I still saw that there were certain gaps even in um, the, the, the documents. And INEC is even accepting that, oh, we'll still send more guidelines about that. So uh, I'm thinking that if it's taking that long to come up with a guideline, what's the fate that you are going to be, you know, able to come up with this e-voting thing by 2021? They want to buy some voting machines and all of that, but it goes, you know, beyond just acquiring those machines. There's a lot of configuration. There's a lot of cybersecurity that has to be put in place. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a lot of testing that has to be done, you know. So um, I'm not, um, you know, very optimistic, but I think that they should be able to pull it before our next general election if it's something that they really want to focus on. And like I said on Saturday during one of the programs, I'm really looking forward to that because it will, you know, drastically reduce the voter apathy, which is one of the things that is really, really affecting um, um, uh, our democracy and electoral system right now because people really don't go out to vote. The percentage of people who are eligible to go uh, to vote and those who actually go out to vote, the gap is, you know, um, a lot. All right. Um, if, I may add, if I may add to what uh, Tibosu just said, I, I, right, I, I also look, I actually agree with him. The general consensus is that there is um, a lot of apathy in Nigeria. The po I think the document that uh, Tuboson was referring to is called the Policy on Conducting Elections in the Context of COVID-19 Pandemic. I think yes. it was signed by uh, Professor Yakubu, uh, the INEC chairman. And uh, what I will actually add to what he said is basically, I know that people are going to be very skeptical. He's right. But I know it has worked in other countries. If you look at uh, um, the United States, for example, where they still have a hybrid uh, uh, situation, even prior to pre-COVID, where they have something called, I think, the direct recording electro electronic system, where each mm -hmm. vote is re directly recorded in the computer's memory. And also, uh, the, I understand also, also the issues of cyber surveillance and monitoring to ensure that we are, we are, um, we are, up, to, we are up to standard in terms of uh, ethical, from an ethical point of view. And also, I feel that um, the same way INEC is, is, has, is, is an, it's meant to be an independent body, they should also contract it to an independent uh, contractor who will actually be able to roll this out successfully. I don't think we have any shortage of Nigerian, Nigerians in technology that, and, 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 and people who are passionate about the digitization process in Nigeria. All right, let's move on to the Punch newspaper. Uh, the big one here is FG screening 19 Nigerian firms for COVID-19 drugs production. Uh, we also have a ministry as companies to submit samples to NAVDAC. Um, coronavirus has spread to 16 of our 20 local governments. That's from Ogun State. Uh, still on a punch, uh, there is a picture on the front page for you of deserted streets and gates locked. Uh, what's at the top of the paper? Uh, we've issued identity numbers to 41 million Nigerians. That's uh, NIMC. Um, we also have uh, INEC plans to start electronic voting in 2021. We've taken that. Um, FG evacuates 69 stranded trafficked Nigerians from Lebanon. A hundred power plant idle generating sinks, generation rather, sinks to 2,627 megawatts. If you go to the bottom of the paper, you will see. Um, can six talks with Ogun over church musk reopening. You're also looking at a cult kingpin, another killed during Lagos supremacy clash. Police nab owned those cemetery workers with human heads. My wife lied that I defiled my daughters. That's Ondo Welder. Ondo Ocean Incursion project not by federal government oh there seems to be a lot in the news this morning guys um let's look at this uh, story on um, the police nabbing uh, some workers before we go to the big one on the screening of the firm uh there seem to be a uh, repeat of this kind of stories different people being caught with human head human head in the 21st century um, your quick thought on that to Boston. Okay. Um, it's, I, I think that we, we are still suffering with, you know, some of this very, what we tend to call um, backwardness, you know, in our society, um, with people, you know, being very disrespectful to um, the remains of the, of the dead, of those who have passed, you know. And um, 
I, I, I think that there has to be more punitive measures because most of the times when we get to hear about these things, um, it seems like we don't see to a logical conclusion. It's just one of those things you see in the news and you never, you know, finally get to hear what happens to the, you know, to the corporate. So um, I think that we just, people need to be, you know, examples have to be made out of these criminals and so that it can stop almost every time we get to hear it. But, you know, I never get to, you know, for once, you know, that, oh, this is what happens to the person that was caught with, you know, this wrongdoing. All right. Um, which other headline? Talk quickly on the screen before we go to Ify. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, for the for the firms that have submitted um, the drugs to uh, NAFTA, yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting. But I just hope that we're not getting carried away with the potential economic benefit that can come out of COVID-19 and not do the proper testing. When I was reading this particular news item, uh, one of uh, the, uh, it, it I said in the news item that oh, um, they've tested some of the drug. And the question is, like, where did you test the drug to be sure that it's working, you know, before submitting it? Was it, you know, a laboratory trial or was it actually a clinical, a cl a clinical trial and all of that? Because, I mean, I, I don't think any state has come out to say that they are using alternative remedies to treat any of the patients. So I just really hope that in an attempt to say, oh, we want to come up, Nigeria has come up with his own drug in an attempt for some people to have economic benefit out of what is happening, which is not totally wrong, we don't lose sight of doing what is the right thing and, you know, the proper thing to be done. Because after, before Madagascar sent their sample, they were, we didn't hear so much about all these drugs. Once we had the Madagascar drug, it seemed like everybody just came out of the woods to say, oh, I have a cure, I have a cure, you know. And I think that, so it's very important for us to be very careful so that, you know, we do not miss steps or, you know, rush into conclusion to use something that has not been properly tried and uh, tested. All right, uh, we'll come to you, Ify, with the Guardian newspaper now. Um, how cost poor service mar virtual schools, courts, others? That's the big one on the Guardian newspaper. Uh, we also have another one. Investors turn between debt forex markets as Naira weakens. Um, more headlines here for you on, um, on the, the paper. Just minutes, those are photographs of locked places. Uh, you're looking at Anak wants government to declare election essential service. Two killed in Lagos gang war. Police arrest fleeing 82 year old man who stabbed wife to death in Imo. Um, FG evacuates 69 Nigerians from Lebanon as 187 Canadians leave Lagos. Um, I, I read the story about the 82-year-old man. Um, he reportedly has dementia and is unaware um, he has killed uh, his wife. Um, quite unfortunate. Uh, but Ify, to you now, which of these big ones um, would you want to speak on? Well, let's just speak on just the uh, Nigerian, I think it was on investor confidence and uh, the... Yeah, the, investors the, turn between debt, forex markets as Naira weakens. I know that I've probably spoken about this uh, a lot. I've spoken about the, um, the rapid financial instrument that was uh, issued by the monetary, um, International Monetary Fund and all the conditions precedents uh, surrounding the implementation or the rollout of those monies. Um, I know for them, what they pointed, they used uh, our economic recovery growth plan as the uh, keystone for how that, the plan around the instrument or the, or the $3.4 billion uh, will be spent. And one of the things I know they were very keen to have, even from an internal, I know, I know that there are certain figures that have been put forward in the, in the, in the public uh, regarding internal investors, our own local investors, trumping uh, any kind of uh, foreign investment that we've had in the, in the last uh, few weeks. So I know that one of the things they looked at was a stabilizing macroeconomic uh, environment, uh, and they wanted us to basically ensure that we are focusing on small and medium-scale enterprises. And that is, what, that, is, that is basically what the principle behind uh, those investors' um, investor decisions would, would look like. And uh, I know that also that the uh, Nigerian Stock Exchange and our index has taken a beating. And even I think as right right now we're we're down by 15 points. And hopefully, 
the investors will make uh, clear decisions based on all the data and information that's put in, in, in front of them. All right, Evie, I, I want to um, take you on on the first one there, the big one on virtual learning, education, court processes. Okay. We're yep. talking costs. Yep. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay. I think it's something that we, we could have done. I, you, I, I hear you loud and clear. I think it's something that we could have done, um, I think, many, many moons ago, you know, considering how much investment has been, has been made in other, other sectors in technology and how, what that would mean even for people that can't afford it. I know there's a figure that was put out that 59% of uh, urban dwellers in Africa uh, live in, um, live in uh, slums. And we know that when you're living in a slum, is the, the probability of you being able to afford uh, uh, technology is more, more or less zil to none. So I would expect that they've said that 40 million uh, devices is what they would, it would take to uh, put these kids through uh, the proper education, through the Nigerian curriculum, the West African curriculum. So let's just see what if they're, if they're going to uh, be true to their word and, and hopefully there's a political will to move this uh, forward. We know that from last year's spending alone in, on, in uh, education, it was only two, two naira to each person in Nigeria, which is staggeringly low. So let's hope that hopefully by moving forward and based on all the lessons that we have learned from COVID that these, these uh, figures will improve. All right, business day is up next. Uh, we have Nigeria's power infrastructure to get urgent makeover. It has uh, two riders, as Buhari orders payment to Siemens. We also have lack of discipline to enforce comply with market rules could threaten project. Uh, that's uh, Esparts talking this morning. Um, there's a picture on your screen. Um, in fresh assault on top African CEOs, Trump turns gaze on additional. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have been following that story. Um, two person, let's start with this one. Nigeria's power infrastructure to get urgent makeover. There are other headlines alluding to this generation dropping and all of that. What's your take? I said that the problem in the Nigerian power sector is like an onion. Uh, you remove one layer, you're going to find another layer of problem and all of that. Um, I mean, it's a step in the right direction. We're happy to hear that uh, Buari has ordered the payment to Siemens, but I think that it's also troubling to know that this agreement was signed sometime last year. Why are they just, you know, um, um, why is he just ordering the payment to Siemens? And uh, Siemens is supposed to take care of the um, 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 trans, uh, the transmission infrastructure and all the things. But there's still a lot of liquidity problem that we're dealing with, you know. Uh, that's why some of the discos are not taking up you know, power from the, the Jenkos. Um, the Jenkos are also complaining of gas supply and all of that, you know. So um, the discos are losing about, I think as at last check, maybe last month, they're losing about 70% of their revenues to ATC and C losses, which is, you know, both infrastructure, energy theft, and a lot of things. So uh, an industry that is bleeding that much, it seems like government is just trying to pump a lot of money into it to solve the problem. But I think a lot of things has to be looked into to properly solve the problem in that industry and, you know, and provide a lasting solution and not just, you know, this patching, patching that we seem to see once in a while when we see um, um, alarming things like, you know, power generation dropping to a, 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 a very uncomfortable level or, uh, uh, and all of that. So I think that government has to find a way and the players in the industry has to find a lasting solution to solve all the problem and not try to patch some while trying to solve, you know, um, um, the other. Um, uh, just a, fresh I mean, to, um, just a quick comment, a real quick comment. Sorry, if I may just add to what okay. was said, uh, right. Felicity. Sorry to cut you uh, short there. I was just, all, all I was going to just say was that I, I, I may... I mean, I'm just going to just hazard a guess as to why uh, there have there has been a bit of hesitation with paying Siemens. Siemens has had a couple of uh, their contracts being paid at 100 percent, and yet there has not been uh, adequate performance of those contracts. And let's not forget that um, back in 2008 as well, there was a huge, uh, more or less like a, a bell, like looming over uh, Siemens with a 1.6 billion dollar, um, 1.6 billion fraud case that they were, they were facing with the America's Department of Justice. And I think it even had a far-reaching effect even in Nigeria. You see, had to even close operations down for a couple of years. So what I just feel that is going on right now is basically some kind of public relations uh, uh, exercise. Uh, for, I mean, sorry to say, but I'm just going to call it speed is speed. And well, hopefully that at some level... 
Hmm. At some level, they can they can sort this out and uh, make proper. I mean, we know that the, the TCN uh, uh, head was fired a couple of days ago. We also know that they've been having this tug and tug of war with the discos as well on the federal level and embeds. We know that these things are, are, are looming problems. And them saying, bring, bringing out a clear and the sweeping statement that they're going to make these improvements, we hope they have the political will and the uh, necessary, necessary will to pull it off. Let's just see where this goes. All right, uh, Tumasu, I'll, I'll give you this last one. Um, is, is the investigation being requested really like uh, uh, an assault on African CEOs, as the paper is saying, um, in fresh assault on top African CEO, Trump turns gaze on additional? I don't know if you've been following that uh, situation. Yes, yes, I, I've been following the news. And um, so <laughs> even with the kind of work I do, I would not be able to tell you that it's an assault or it's not an assault. You know, but because most of the time there's no smoke without fire. But the question you have to ask yourself is, um, is, is the person the light is being shown on, does he have any skeletons in his cupboard? You know, uh, or are they trying to just spin some loopholes, uh, spin some situations against, against him? Uh, I think what is important is for African leaders to just ensure that we're not suffering from um, external um, 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 forces that are trying to um, um, defame the character of some of the most celebrated um, Afri African leaders. You know, Adishino is one of the most celebrated um, CEOs of, 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 of Af joint African-owned entity. And so if anything is wrong with him, the forces or the call for investigation, even if it's coming from outside, has to be critically looked at so that it doesn't look like it's, you know, anything fishy is happening. Sorry, okay. I have to just okay. say something yeah. because it's almost a very pressing issue. Just real quick, sorry. Yeah, I agree with you, but the truth of the matter is they have already done that. They have already fulfilled every obligation under this. There has been a full investigation that has been conducted. It has been completed, and he has found he has not been found wanting. So for us to be retrogressive in terms of, uh, of our uh, look and, and our, our view of this uh, particular circumstance, just because Trump and Mnuchin have come forward, I mean, it doesn't yeah, but, make but, any but sense. But if he, the accusers are saying that the, the uh, ethics committee was compromised, that that committee's report uh, was, does not, did not do a proper investigation, uh, isn't mm -hmm. that something that, you know, we should actually um, take a look? Uh, what is so wrong, really, in getting an independent investigator in? Well, I mean, again, that can always be, be, be unless they're, they're pick, picking and prodding and they want to make sure that these things are done well. But at the end of the day, right, the, the ethics committee was constituted and nobody had any problems with the ethics committee and, and its composition. And at the point where you, we, you formally put them forward, then they sh they sh that question should be minimized. And I think it's, it's just taking us back and not taking us forward. And we all know that Trump and his, um, um, his government have had a lot of problems with everybody, and, and, and they've never really been able to have any kind of credibility in the, in, in, from a global perspective. So this is just taking us back, and, and I think they're just trying to compromise or try, trying to uh, negate any kind of goodwill that he's going to have for uh, the elections coming up. I think it's in August or September. Yes, so we need, yes. very, we need to be very cautious about this, and let us just... We, proper procedure has been fulfilled. And let's not forget, America is a member of uh, the board, of uh, the African Development Bank, and so is Nigeria. Those are the biggest two shareholders, and Nigeria has been very quiet. So if you're saying that they, are, they have been compromised, Nigeria has taken a step back just to make sure that this ethics committee can do their job. And they have not, they have not made any public statements about additional, which should tell you that his, his reach and his, and his, uh, and his um, intentions are far reaching from Nigerian shores. All right, so let, 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 let me quickly weigh these things. Let me quickly ask, uh, to us, because we were out of time, um, the, the allegations that I saw there had, to, had nothing to do with uh, financial misappropriation. Is, that, is there yes, a positive now. angle to that? Because it's all about how he didn't conduct um, interviews, I mean, recruitment the right way, uh, personal gains and all of that. And I did see his response where he tried to explain some of this. But on the flip side of it, the fact that there was no financial misappropriation um, being uh, added to the allegation, is that a good thing? Yes, it's a good thing. Um, I mean, the allegations against him are procedural. And like if he said, this is even looking more like the, um, it's a fight against him for the election that is coming up. And I think we should even fold our hands. If um, going by history and some of the things we've even seen in movies are anything to go by, you know that the West 
are very good when it comes to using the media against anybody and to fulfill their agenda. That is what I see happening here. And I, I, and I think that Nigeria shouldn't even fold its hand. African leaders shouldn't fold its hand. This is one of the best uh, AMD president that we've ever had. It's one of Africa's brightest. You shouldn't right, allow someone's it. intention. Someone that is can be labeled as a bit, you know, on um, 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 uh, unstable to, to allow us to just fling someone that is very good away because he doesn't suit his own um, agenda. All right, Tobasu, thank you very much, uh, both of you. Ufi, also, for coming on the program. Thanks, Felicity. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. You take care and have a lovely day. And that's a wrap on the newspaper headlines review. I hope you got some insight to uh, what the papers are really saying uh, via the thoughts of our guest. The program returns tomorrow morning, same time. I hope you can make it a date. Thanks for watching. My name is Felicity Ezewik. I'll see you in a bit.